So welcome to another episode of Viva. Uh, on this, in this episode, we'll be talking about blackness in Germany or in Europe at large, racism on the continent, mm-hmm. and what our experiences have been like here in Berlin. Yeah. So, but, but before we go on to that, I just want to say, do you like my Rick and Morty? Right. Sweater? Look at that. Who doesn't like? If, if you don't like Rick, Rick and Morty, you're you're, you're, you're a loser. <laughs> Leave a comment down below about my Rick and Morty sweater. Also, if you are listening to us on Spotify or Podbean or a non-visual podcast uh, streaming platform, we do have video footage as well. You can find it on Tones of Melanin TV and you can come and see our pretty little faces. <laughs> Yes. And if you're coming here, we're gonna. And if you're watching us on YouTube, sorry, we have extended versions of the podcast on Podbean, on Spotify, and all of these. Just look for Viva Podcast. We love you. Let's talk about racism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, let's talk about racism. All right. So yeah, we, we I think we touched on this in a previous episode. episode yeah, on a lot of the previous. On a lot episodes, of them, like yeah. race always finds its way in our conversations. Yeah, because it's important, and this is true. We struggle with it every single freaking day. So yeah, this is true. Yeah. I mean, I I definitely feel like all right. The two European cities so far that I've spent the most time in mm-hmm. has been Paris. Where my father's side of the family lives, mm-hmm. and now Berlin. And Berlin is still like very fresh. It's only been like I think five, going on six months mm-hmm. being in Berlin. But I mean, there are already I there are so many differences for me in being black here versus being black in Paris. Mm-hmm. And I think you know there's definitely a there's a hierarchy of the of acceptable forms of blackness that white Europeans feel comfortable with mm-hmm. I think yeah you know and I feel like a lot of that depends on uh, how you present your blackness to white Europeans and also <laughs> to white to white to, 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 to the to the white ease <laughs> like literally the letter Y and T yeah white right, exactly oh God, but I'm not ashamed <laughs> but uh, but I but I feel like in Britain, in Paris for example Paris compared to Berlin has a disproportionately larger amount of black people mm-hmm. um, and I and I and I in in, in, in Paris is a spectrum of blackness right where mm-hmm. you have your like your more intellectual um, professional working black Parisians mm-hmm. and then you have uh, sort of um, freshly arrived immigrants mm-hmm. who you see who who are hyper visible to other black people, but ironically enough, invisible to white French people. For mm-hmm. example, if you go to uh, where a lot of the touristy spots are, Champs Elysees, the Eiffel Tower, um, uh, the Arc de Triomphe, you have like a lot of uh, you have a lot of Africans, you know, because there aren't there aren't African Americans. You have a lot of Africans who who are selling uh mer- like touristy merchandise like yeah. keychains little statues etc etc mm-hmm. and they i feel like they understand a lot and i feel like in paris you're you're as a black person you sort of understand in a lot of ways where you fall on the spectrum which mm-hmm. is to say that black people are hyper aware of their status in paris mm-hmm. wh- wh- whether or not french white french people want to believe that or not yeah and so for me one of my the more difficult things about living in Paris is that, all right, so I have some family that live in the center of the city, you know, mm-hmm. like very wealthy area. I have some family that are in the suburbs, in the Bangus, which are totally different. It's a totally different, like, mm-hmm. vibe in the, in the French suburbs and being in the center of the city where a lot of the uh, white French wealth is concentrated. Yeah. And so for me, always sort of going between going from the city to the suburbs and the suburbs to the city, I saw the transition or the spectrum of blackness that exists in Paris. Mm-hmm. And it always made me really uncomfortable because um, white French people seem to think that there is no such thing as mm-hmm. race or that black, if you're French, you're French, irrespective of your cultural heritage, yeah. which is really fucked up because yeah. in... Um, in Article One of the French Constitution, written in 1958, mm. there is a clause that says something like, uh, "French or France 
um, as a republic, the French Republic, there is, I'm trying to translate this, right? <laughs> the French Republic does yeah. not uh, recognize different people and the differences of like their race, okay. which is really fucked up because okay. the thing is, it makes it illegal, it's illegal to sort of then collect statistics mm. on different groups of people, people. Mm. in France. Mm. And you can and imagine. So, I, I'm, I'm imagining that it's a way of like uh, obviously uh, keeping the capitalist society going exactly, and yeah. a way to keep basically black people yeah. oppressed. Yeah. Yeah. And black people oppressed in France and other groups of people who are not white mm. but who are born in France and identify as French. Yeah. There, there's there. The thing is, there's no data that sort of. Um, talks of, that sort of gives them a type of visibility needed to, you know, like change laws or policy or to be a more progressive republic. Like, yeah. because that data doesn't exist because it's illegal. Yeah. According to this article that was written, you know, decades ago. Mm. And so in Paris, you have all these different groups of black people that fall on the spectrum, right? You have people, you have the men selling like Eiffel Tower keychains at the Eiffel Tower. Mm. You have your professional uh, working class black French person working in banks. Mm -hmm. You have your intellectual French person who works as a professor or who works at a research institution mm -hmm. or, you know, who's a writer, editor, consultant, whatever in France. Mm -hmm. and. Europe, I feel as a whole, is very afraid of like one unifying black voice, yeah. which is why there's no data, there's, yeah. no, there's no statistics yeah. on the different groups of people, people. that mm -hmm. exist there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for a lot of a lot of Europeans, a lot of black Europeans look to the U.S. as an example because mm -hmm. in the U.S., irrespective of your uh, cultural heritage or your background, you are always considered first and foremost American yeah. before you are anything else. Yeah. With the exception of African Americans by, black, by Americans who view black Americans as black before they're Americans. Outside of the U.S. Yeah. canon, you're seen as American before you're seen as anything else. else and in yeah. Europe, that's not what it is. Even if you're born in France, mm -hmm. even if you're family, even if you're second, third generation French, yeah. you're not French. Mm -hmm. You are totally so yeah. you are something else else yeah you're is, othered yeah mm -hmm. which is really problematic because europe as it stands is very afraid of mm -hmm. one unifying black voice, voice one mm -hmm. unifying black identity yeah and i don't know what do you yeah because you so, went to paris as well for yeah, yeah i i, I, I did go to paris but it was a i think it was a like a short-handed experience mm -hmm. and i say this in the sense because i went um for afropunk yeah. And when I was there, um, the area that I stayed in and when I attended the Afropunk event, it was just black people everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. Afropunk, thank you so much for this beautiful experience. I will be back every single time I can. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. I felt like I was home, yeah. like just for the, that little while. Um, that being said, I did really in particular... Um, pick out any types of mm. different uh, like instances of racism. I feel like people were very. I guess because, again because of the area that I was in, yeah. and also because there were so much, there were so many black people there mm. at the time um, that it was just maybe a little bit difficult for yeah. people to be racist, or maybe yeah. we just didn't care because yeah. we were just around our yeah. like people. Like yeah. yes, yeah. all the blackness. Especially um, coming from Berlin, like exactly, exactly. Um, especially coming from Berlin. Um, but in in terms of um, being in in Germany, they actually mm. just this year that. or last yeah. year launched the Afro Census, Finally, which yeah. was um, a census that was, was sent around to only um, Black people yeah. um, to kind of take a a um, an audit or a number like to get an idea of the number yeah. of black people that is in Berlin because they've never had it. The government it's here do imagine it's like, crazy. Two thousand and nineteen was the first time that they launched it and it was launched by black people because it was so necessary course. and needed. Um and I think as you were saying, I think um you know they're afraid of the black unified five voice. Um so I'm glad that we're taking this um, kind of position on the racism topic instead of going oh yeah I've you know experienced this and this yeah. I'm glad we're talking about like the governmental issues um, with racism and and this type of racism like people don't picture or see this as being racist but it is yeah. imagine being in a country and you don't know how many of 
um, you know, your people are in that country is just ridiculous to me. It makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and and so like the, the fact that this census was la launched last year like they've collected and it's like millions of black people that they found that are in Berlin wow. op as opposed to like the thousands that they assumed we are here like hundreds of thousands that they assume you know like mm -hmm. so it's it's really um, it's an important mm -hmm. thing it's an important thing um, for us to know mm -hmm. for us to learn about and and I'm glad that it happened um, yeah. yeah and it's just like the systemic ways of keeping black people oppressed are so vast mm -hmm, yeah. um, and I think we don't recognize these things and, and we don't look into these things enough to kind of you know hold ourselves yeah. accountable for our well-being yeah you know I mean I just find it and I've always found it so odd and uh, ironic in Europe that for a continent that prides itself on all these historic movements inclusivity yeah i mean diversity diversity multiculturalism Ugh. i mean and i've always said like even in a sort of even in, in even in, in, even if it, ugh, in a very <laughs> north american uh, american centric sort of like lens like multiculturalism diversity inclusion means very different things to white people than it means to people of color mm. and i feel like europe as a continent that sort of prided itself you know on these periods in history you know we have the revolutions and you have the, the industrial revolution and you have like the uh era of like enlightenment mm -hmm. where in modern in modern europe <laughs> modern europe is against the idea of sort of leveraging data mm -hmm. to lift a lot of its citizens regardless of their color mm -hmm. out of poverty or mm -hmm. sort of out of these horrible economic situations mm -hmm. where you know, and, and, it's, and, it's a, and it's a very sort of fractured way to even uh, unify Europe itself, right? If you're not even collecting data, or you, or people don't under people don't have a, a very accurate sense of uh, population mm -hmm. or demographic information at all. Yeah. And I think um, in terms of Black Europe, even I mean the way Black Europeans I found view themselves is very different from the way African Americans mm -hmm. view themselves, yeah. of course, like there's a different history there. Mm -hmm. But I find, and, and I use Paris because I spent the most of my life, most of my time in Paris and Europe. In Paris in particular, like, and even I was like, I fell trapped to this too, like African Americans, generally black Americans have a very romantic view of the city. Yeah. But I've never had this romantic view of, of Paris. Of Paris. Mm -hmm. And I've oftentimes, Criticized a lot of Black American writers, Baldwin, um, his mentor, what was his name, Wright, Richard Wright, etc., mm -hmm. for their very romanticized view of Paris. Mm -hmm. But then I sort of had to, I mean, I understand that in a lot of ways, maybe they even fail to recognize their privilege of being American in mm -hmm. France mm -hmm. versus I think the way they view themselves was just as Negroes that had been liberated by living in this country. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But that failure to recognize the privilege in their Americanness because America did not sort of give them that privilege itself mm -hmm. is still quite blinding. Yeah. Because in the because in Paris, after the the imaginary romantic picture that a lot of a black Americans have of Paris is walking through like Montparnasse mm -hmm. and going to the Champs Elysees and mm -hmm. going to like uh, Montmartre and like mm -hmm. seeing all of these places that their idols were in and, without yeah. giving. Without, a second thought right but yeah. the thing about being in these areas especially in Mon, um in Montmartre and like Pigalle is that when you're in these areas you they're very mm, black immigrants are invisible mm -hmm. in these areas yeah. despite the fact that now these areas are overrun or not overrun but they're sort of crowded with black immigrants yeah but when a black american is sort of taking a tour of paris and they see these areas and not the people that inhabit them mm -hmm. it's kind of odd to me yeah you know like how can you only see like when you go when you walk down champs Elysees, yeah you have all these fancy stores but mm -hmm. like if you keep walking you know past yeah. champs de mars you call the dead whatever mm -hmm. you'll see hordes of immigrants who are like just trying to make a living basically yeah. and like people don't see that they don't acknowledge they it. don't acknowledge it mm -hmm. it's like they're invisible but they're very visible to other black mm -hmm. people who, mm -hmm. yeah but it could also just be like what you're looking for when you go yeah. to a particular city yeah 
that too. But I'm just yeah. like, I don't know. I'm black. I'm looking at all the black folks. People, like, yes. you know, like, I'm not picking and choosing which black person yeah. I'm looking at yeah. in a city. Like, yeah. I'm looking at all y'all. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Yeah. yeah it's and the like, same for me. And I, and as you see, you know, you're talking about these people who are invisible or the, mm-hmm. these black people who are invisible in Paris. Like you can um, kind of sort of put it hand in hand with the black people who are here. Oh, yeah. Um, in, for example, the... the, the um, if you go to Gullitzer Park mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. even in yeah. Free Channel, like, I mean, I yeah. don't know. It's... And they have, they have a lot of um, black, you know, African, mm-hmm. mostly African mostly. men who are in the parks and... And they're you never hanging see out. The and women. Then, yeah, yeah, women. yeah. You never see the women. Um, yeah, but you see the you know these African men. And yeah. I try to. One thing I try to do, um, you know, is acknowledge my people wherever I go. Yeah. Um. So like when I'm walking through the parks and everything, and these men like whistle at me or something, I'm like, you know, you can't handle this. Relax, you know. Yeah. And then like I have like a real nice conversation. Have towards exactly. Them. Like yeah, because I I and I know it's. You know, it's seen as like this cat calling is is looked down upon in society and so on and so forth. Um, it's which I a black man exactly. Shook. Yeah, they exactly they you get they get so scared and and I feel like you know I don't want to contribute to that. Yeah, I mean I know it's not my responsibility mm-hmm. to like teach these men manners and so on and so forth. But I feel like you know people grow up a certain way mm-hmm. and they don't know better until they're taught better. Fair, yeah. yeah, you know, and so like we were talking about financial literacy and so I don't know better until I didn't know shit about savings account yeah. until you told me about this and now yeah. I'm like my ass is gonna get a proper <laughs> savings account and get that, you know, yeah. so people don't do better until they know better. And so as I was saying, like, you know, these men, they, they can't call or whatever and I like joke with them and stuff and then like, you know, I don't like when you do that and i think a lot of women don't like it either so maybe you shouldn't do that mm. um and they're like okay respect sister mm. respect sister you know and then mm. we talk and, and and a lot of um two of my i would say closest african um ghanaian mm. nigerian just mm. to specify and stop saying freaking cont- the whole continent of mm. africa um closest friends mm. um i actually met one of them when i was walking in um Mawa Park oh, and nice. he he was actually promoting his album his yeah. songs and the person that I was with a friend at the time and she didn't want to stop you know another black girl she didn't wow. want he was like he's like hey sisters can I talk to you for a moment he was very respect- yeah. res- respectful um, and she didn't want to stop and stuff and I was like girl so I stopped and I started talking to him. He's like, yeah, this is my song. And I want to have black women featured in the videos because, you know, living in Berlin, yeah. it's so difficult. And every time I ask, try to ask on Facebook, like nobody yeah. shows up, you know, I just need some support. So I've been, I've just like, you know, I'm putting my foot on the ground and I'm just out here trying to, to um, get black women to be in the videos because I want to showcase, you know, black yeah. women. So, and I was like, okay, cool. Send yeah. me the song. I'll take your number. To, and we started talking and then we did the music video it was beautiful i show you i will show you after this yeah um and actually i might i'll put it in the link down below so you can have a look as well his name is stanley rubin and the song is beautiful the video was was just it the shoot itself was yeah. amazing um so we went to the video shoot and we ended up inviting one other friend yeah. we, i invited a bunch of other black women as well and people said they were going to show up and just never did mm-hmm. um so the three of us ended up being there it was a beautiful set it was maybe two or three other guys and then the three of us and we played like volleyball in the video and like cute. dance around the fire yeah. and it was a very very cute and fun time yeah and you know that happened because i decided like listen i'm not going to ignore yeah. you know my brother on the street yeah and and i you know it like kind of winding back into the way that the system is set up to make us yeah. kind of ignore you know mm-hmm. these uh, black people who yeah. are seen as less than yeah. because they don't have corporate jobs or they don't have like say hi to or your or brothers to, and sisters or to judge the way that they've been forced to make to, a exactly yeah. exactly exactly um you know and in society like this this type of racism is like i guess i would call it it's a new term i guess societal racism i don't know mm-hmm. if that's a thing yeah <laughs> societal racism where they put in your mind that you know someone who that works a, a garbage job or yeah. as a gar- work workers as a, a, a garbage man or a cleaner mm-hmm. or you know um i mean drug dealers they matter too 
like they're trying to make money just like us. I mean, like, really, like they matter too, you know. Like so, you you see these these people and um, you know, prostitutes, whatever else, mm. and they make society kind of places in our minds to look down on them, and we don't re- realize our privilege of yeah. being able to work in the corporate world, whereas they don't have the skills that are necessary to be able to do that, you know? So that's corporate or social racism. I mean, yeah, I feel like also that type of racism, I mean, it's so sneaky, it's so insidious, yes. and and it just, and the thing is like, because <laughs> a lot of European cities were built on the labor of mm-hmm. black people, yeah, more or less, uh, imported work from their colonies, imported mm-hmm. work and c- workers. And I feel like for what really just bothers me about white people in Europe purposefully sort of uh, making black people invisible in a lot of mm-hmm. ways, invisible in public places, Yeah, uh, is that like they seem to not understand the structures that were put into place that led people to make these types of decisions mm-hmm for their families or for their lives, right? Like, so for example, in Berlin, you see lots of, um, one of the, well, I mean, one of my more striking thoughts when I first came to Berlin was like, and I also came to Berlin from Paris because I was there, mm-hmm. whatever. And I remember in Berlin, I was, I, the first thing I was just like, okay, well, there's just, I don't really see a lot of black people. Mm-hmm. Anyway, like I see lots of Turkish people, yeah. of course, which is normal yeah. because of the history. I see lots of, Arab people, mm-hmm. etc. But like, where are the black folks at? Yeah, you know, like what an exact, I don't know. Girl, you know, and so I swear because it's so funny because they have lots of events that I see people post on mm-hmm. Instagram and Facebook and so mm-hmm. on, like with parties, and they're like hella black people. And I'm mm-hmm. like, where the hell are these black? Where are be? they at? Where but do I you also be? think though, within the black communities mm-hmm. in Paris, well in Europe in general, mm-hmm. it's also, there is no unifying voice amongst us. Mm. I think there are pockets of it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you'll, like if you have a close group of friends, you know, maybe some of you are from the Caribbean, maybe some of you are African, mm-hmm. but that's like a very small pocket of yeah. that type of unifying black voice. Yeah. But at, as a whole, it's just, it's just not here mm. in Europe, which is so different from um, the US. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, so when I first came here, I saw these African men, primarily men, because I rarely see African women. Women, yeah. And that's something I'm still, I mean, one, I'm still looking for the African women. I'm (laughs) like, where are you, you know? And like, because, you know, these men have children. They Mm -hmm. have black children. So, Mm -hmm. and their black children have black mothers. So where are they? Like, but I, I, I was just like, so, I think I was just very upset at seeing a lot of, African men, you know, selling drugs here that they normally possibly wouldn't even use in their home, home country, country. you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and and it's because of the of the structures here that have led them or that have in a lot of ways forced them yeah, to, to do that to do that in mm-hmm. order to provide. And yeah. white people will very happily Germans will very happily go to Gorlitz Park yeah. and buy a bag. Exactly. You know, buy a gram, exactly. You know, and, and then talk down on them and, and then for talk down <laughs> on them or just like walk straight past them as if yeah, as they, if they didn't just buy a gram. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's a very odd Yeah. It's a very odd thing. Yeah. And I think in terms of more acceptable forms of blackness, mm-hmm. whatever that, mm-hmm. I'm putting this in quotes, acceptable forms of blackness to the white gays, gays. right, mm-hmm. to the white folks. Yeah. It's just like, I'm just like, all right, so <laughs> because I'm black but American, it gives me some pass or yeah. like leeway yes. to be accepted into yes. culture. Yes, oh my gosh. Yes this one yeah it yeah. does like you can't detect you detect a very american accent and mm-hmm. the, the 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 vibe is just totally different, different. like mm-hmm. the interest in me as a person is mm-hmm. totally different like yeah instead of asking me maybe questions about what it's like to be black in berlin white germans will ask me what i think about trump you're asking me <laughs> what i think about trump a black person like oh, yeah, you know right. what i mean like make it make sense like, yeah what? i think i think They're the, I feel like white people just don't know what to say to black people so they just kind of like ask the first thing that pops into their mind and it's like are you fucking I feel like I we should have like as a united front just not answer dumb questions that come from I'm white gonna people. start being like 
Uh, what's I don't do that. Colony? What, what, what's what's popping with Namibia? Remember that was a colony. Like what's right? happening with that? Like, right. Remember Congo? What yeah. y'all did? I mean, I'm not really about to just start. I mean, Belgium is a whole other case because Woo. Belgium really wants the world to forget the right? horrendous acts they did during their colonial Woo. period. Still continue to do like there's no side of millions Belgium upon tries millions real hard. upon millions of yeah. people. Belgium Fuck tries Belgium, hard. to be honest. Belgium tries real hard. Like the chocolate that they eat, the imported, that 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 chocolate that they make, that sort of imported from ingredients from from Congo. <laughs> you know? I remember when I was in Belgium, they'd be like, "Would you like some?" I was no, like, no, no, thank you. Like you know, or if I am gonna take some chocolate, I would take it with a sign of an apology. Like, right. You know, like can you, yeah, can right. you know, apologize for what you did to Patrice Lemon, but like yeah, I don't know, exactly. like, I don't know. It's just, Mm, but that's you know I don't know I feel like white Europeans have a very different guilt than white Americans. Yep. Still very misplaced yep. guilt as a whole. White people don't like to be seen even as. First of all, they don't like to apologize. I Their mean, egos got them all the way fucked up. I mean, and white people literally don't see themselves. They white see the thing about white Europeans we and white you, Americans. We see. You. <laughs> the thing about white Europeans and white Americans and white people everywhere is mm. that white people refuse to be seen mm. as sort of monolithic mm. but they sort of force or project this idea of selfhood to other groups of people mm. so a white person will very probably say no i'm not british i'm irish mm. but a black person is not allowed to say oh no i'm not senegalese i'm south african yeah and it's just like yeah you know, like it's, very, it's very, it's very hypocritical. It's very ironic, and there are very few white people that recognize this yeah. as a privilege. Yeah. But white people in general have historically never been afforded the 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 privilege to see themselves mm. as uh, monolithic or as one. Yeah. And they've forced other people to, to but you know. Yeah. That's, I mean, I feel like that's all we have to say, like, yeah, yeah racism happens Same. everywhere, like, shit, I mean, what can yeah. you say, like, if, if you're a black person or a person of color, there's nowhere on earth, apart from Africa, <laughs> nope. where you will not experience some type of racism, racism systemic colorism. racism, colorism, oh, even yeah. in Africa, there's colorism too, when oh, it's yeah. embedded in the society, oh, my God. yeah, I went to Sudan. that's another story, <laughs> but really quickly, I went to, when I went to Sudan, Dan yeah. last summer, uh, yeah. last year to visit my relatives. Mm. Can you believe? So you know, Southern Sudanese people are very dark. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I I have relatives tell me I'm light skinned What? <laughs> me. And there you have it. And there you have it. Like I was just like, you know. But that's a <laughs> see colorism on a spectrum, even on the continent. Oh my very, gosh. It, it works in very funny ways. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. That concludes this episode. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for joining us Thank on for this joining us. episode yes. of Viva yes. Podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you care. Sure Leave you a can. comment down below with your thoughts. We want your opinions. We want your comments. We want your everything in between. Yes. Yes. All right. Deuces. Ciao. Bye.